roads. The only option for some, the preferred option for some, and the last resort for some. No matter how you feel about them, they're a staple for almost all. We watch people running on them on the TV, we dream about doing it at some of the best locations in the world and train on it to get to where we want to be, but there are major drawbacks with road running and there are other options. But as with everything on this channel, I'm not just going to offer you the alternatives, I'm going to give you the why. Why you should consider them. And that might just help you take your training and racing to the next level. Let's be very clear about what this is not first. This is not road running bashing because I do almost all of my training on the road and I love training on the road, but something I've realized since I've moved to Thailand and I hadn't, I can't believe I didn't put two and two together until very recently is that I'm struggling more with not necessarily injury, but feeling like I'm on the cusp of injury. And I think that's because the variation in my training's not there like it was in the UK. Sometimes in the UK, I would go out and I would run a road hour or I might run longer if I'm training for something a little bit longer but also I would mix it up at the weekends I might go out on the trails in the week I might go out on the trails we were very lucky that we had them right behind our house and we had lots of areas where we could run and I get that but I did vary my training a lot so what this video is going to be is a love letter to variation in training I guess I would call it and I'm going to give you the points that I would make not against road running, but the drawbacks of road running. It's probably not gonna surprise you that the first drawback to road running is the road, as in the surface that you're running on. Um, sadly, this isn't a road YouTube channel, so I don't know the exact name of what it's made up of, like whatever it is, concrete bitumen, I'm not sure, but the point is, it's unforgiving on the legs or let's say it's just it's more unforgiving than when you're out on different surfaces and one of Newton's laws I can't tell you which one it is because again this is not a science channel this is a running channel but one of Newton's laws is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction and that's never so true as when you are running on road because the force that you put through each time your foot strikes the pavement there will be an opposite force coming back up reacting off of the ground into your joints and your legs so, so obviously the better your joints are absorbing shock or the better technique that you have the more absorbing you're going to be of, of that impact so the hard surface of the road is going to put more force back up into your joints than let's say grass or even a treadmill this is the surface that if you exclusively train on it then you're going to put a lot of force through your joints very regularly and if you think about it logically it leads us on to point number two now the muscles work in so many different ways when you run on roads you use pretty much the same muscles in the same way to propel you forwards with very little variation so let's say I go out for a consistent run maybe running at five minutes per kilometer because of the fact that the ground I'm not having to look at it I'm not having to worry too much maybe there's the odd curb I might fall off of or I might trip up on a pavement slab but generally I'm not having to think too hard about that so the muscles that I use are used in the same patterns in the same way for the entire run where I see massive benefit in trail running and not so much in road running is that you have lots of muscles that do lots of different things in your body so some big muscles are there to move you to drive you forwards or to make you jump but there are a ton a ton of little stabilizer muscles and other core muscles within your body that are there for let's say correcting balance or there for holding your posture in the right way so when you go onto the trails because you're looking down you're looking at roots you're looking at stones you may be mud you may be going uphill you may be going downhill you're really engaging the smaller more stability type muscles the more core type muscles that you wouldn't necessarily engage if you're out on the road and why is that beneficial i mean two reasons really the first one is that it's going to help you reduce your risk of injury if you've got muscles that can react and respond accordingly and quickly if you 
turn your ankle or if you trip over a curb or if you're moving in one way and then you have to move another way. The, the better they are at responding and reacting to these kinds of things, the more likely you are to, to be able to avoid injury in the first place. But also, I kind of see it as the Team Sky marginal gains theory. If you're working on all of these little muscles and even just improving them by 1%, then actually add all of that up in terms of an overall improvement to your running is going to make quite a significant difference. And believe you me, I've really felt it. When we run predominantly on the roads and on the flat out here, and then I get to trail races, I'm picking up blisters, I'm getting aches and pains in different parts of the body that I wouldn't have done in the UK because trail running was part of my routine. And I'm thinking I need to add trails back into my life ASAP, or at least as soon as possible. The other thing about roads, if you've noticed because we live in Bangkok is it's actually really hard in majority, not completely, but it's actually really hard to find any type of real true elevation up and down on roads. And you can get it if you live in the Yorkshire Dales or whatever, but my bet is if you live in the Yorkshire Dales, you're probably going to be running on trails anyway. And it's the same in most of the places that I've ever been. The roads, when they're hilly, when they're really steep up and down, then actually people tend to get out on the trails instead. And I live in Bangkok, or we live in Bangkok, which is pan flat. And where we're training now in Phuket, it's pretty much pan flat. So you just don't get that variation in up and down that, that hills and off-road affords you. And that sometimes is a blessing if you really want to work on your pacing, if you want to get good at hitting an exact pace with no variation and no worries and no needs for thinking, oh, I've got to tone it down because I'm going uphill or downhill. But ultimately, uphill and downhill work your running muscles in different ways. They kind of supplement what you're doing when you're running on the flat. You know, different parts of the quads, different parts of the hamstrings and calves will be functioning when you're going uphill and downhill to running like, say, I am now on the flat. And, you know, the more you use your muscles in as many different ways as possible, that has to be of benefit, right? My fourth point, and probably for me, the most important point, just for me, but it's more of a psychological point, and it's something that it took me a little while to learn, but once I learnt it, it really changed the game with my running. And I'm gonna take you into my world to explain more. Let's take a step away from the physical drawbacks of road running for a second and deal with what I think is equally important, which is the psychological drawback, but also the solution. We have to deal with our egos. When we run on the road, and particularly in the early days of our running journeys, we can have a tendency to get caught up in session comparisons. The process of comparing our times or other metrics from running the same routes or just the same elevations. I've actually seen this lead to session anxiety in athletes. The thought that somehow they're not improving if they can't run that route faster than last time. Always then aiming for PBs or something to say, you're better. It's a dangerous place to be. It's a kind of trap that the majority fall into in the early days. But progress isn't linear, and it can be made in so many different ways. The solution to this session comparison? Hit the trails. They're so much more varied, and even the surfaces on the same routes can change from week to week and season to season. You can almost never compare a like-for-like -like run on the trails. And why would you? A trail half marathon, for example, isn't meant to be comparable to a road half marathon. They're different experiences. Being away from the road teaches your ego a valuable lesson about how comparison to previous experiences can rob you of the joy of being in the now. Embracing the moment for what it is, a pleasure to be able to be out when some aren't so lucky. You learn that you can't compare. But more importantly, you learn that you shouldn't compare. And that's real freedom that some just can't find on the roads. Okay, tip five. This is, again, this is a more of a psychological one, but it's a question to you, I guess. What do you run for? Let me explain a little bit. I've done a lot of running in my life. I love it, I'm completely connected to the process. But if you were to ask me what are my favorite runs, what are my favorite memories of running, I don't think Maybe some races on road, but there's certainly not a single training session that I've done on road that would trump any of the amazing training sessions that I've had when I've gone out onto the trails because ultimately we're trying to connect this process. We're trying to do it for life. So we have to find the things that appeal to us and it's not for everyone, but for me, finding the beauty in nature, 
taking off my headphones and just getting out and running across the North Downs, which is where I used to live, or running onto trails somewhere in Thailand, or running on trails somewhere else in the UK. These are the things that I, when times get tough, access in my memory banks and think, yeah, but you get to do this. So appreciating the beauty in nature and appreciating what you have available to you is a really important part of the process. It's part of the step and it's part of connecting to your why for running. And whilst I totally get in terms of opportunity, some people live in the center of cities, some people don't have access to trails or at least regularly have access to trails. And I, I do understand that and I completely get that. We feel the same because we live in Bangkok. It's very hard to get away and get out onto trails. So we're having to pick our times. But when we do get out onto trails, then it's all worth it. All the effort to get out there, it's worth it. It helps connect us to that process. We want to be runners that run until we're in our 90s. And this is the way we're going to achieve that. And it's not going to be by getting up and slogging ourselves every single time on the road. That's just not how our mindset is going to work. By necessity, it's obviously going to be the large proportion of our training is going to be hard surfaces and road because we have to. But we need trails in our life to help keep us connected to the process long term. As I say, none of this video is designed to bash road running. It is our staple, it's what we do. But I want to give you a new perspective about why if you don't necessarily go out on trails, why it would benefit you. And it will definitely bring your running on. It will definitely improve you as a runner. It will reduce your risk of injury and it will make you a faster overall runner. And to celebrate the fact that I love both, I'm gonna link two videos here. One's my favorite trail race, one's my favorite road race, so that you can get a comparison about what I go through when I do the different races, but I love them both equally. If you haven't subscribed, consider it. No hard sell as always. And the next two videos are Mary and I racing a trail race in Koyaoyai, which is just off of Phuket this weekend. Couldn't be more excited to bring that to you. See you Wednesday.